Welcome to my channel, Star of Leo. I'm Hania Karcher, its founder, and this is my first talking vlog. And today I thought I'd just update you on, you know, how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, maybe what are the plans for the, for the future. You know, what especially I want to talk about is maybe what I'm reading because I think that's, that's my biggest interest right now you know so yeah since this is the first uh talking vlog that i'll be doing i might as well tell you about you know who i am and why i started this blog um yeah so i'm hania i created star of leo i'm living in lisbon right now but i'm actually from um england me and my husband we lived in london for uh, four years and then we decided to do like a sort of travel around the world thing and that took us here um we settled in berlin and then we came here and then covid happened and you know, it's been just you know stuck here i haven't gone back to england for a year you know so i'm just keeping busy with all my things um yeah i started this vlog because i i was watching a ton of like YouTube channels. Um, Jonna Jinton, Jonna Yinton, how do you pronounce it? Athena Mella, I absolutely love her channel. Um, I actually bought a book of hers called um, The Ramble Guides, where she talks about the Peak District and you know gives guidance to places you should visit. Um, Places you should stay, places you should visit to, to go eat and like where to go for a you know, drink and um, most especially this is why she has the channel to, to guide you around the sort of walks you can do around the Peak District which is absolutely something I really want to do as soon as we can travel I just want to go back to home, you know, England which is my home um, and do all these walks that she just I absolutely love the look of them. I want to go and see the Peak District and try them out. Um, yeah, I'll, I might show you that book. It's not actually here right now, but I'll bring it later and maybe have that. Um, yeah, so me and my husband are here. There's so many amazing places you can go to here near Lisbon, and that's uh, the blog is basically so far I've been all of the things we've done here near Lisbon, nature-wise, mostly nature, because that's where I really want to be right now during this time. So the the reason I started this blog was because I was drawn to these blogs, you know, by Athena Mello, by, you know, all these bloggers that were, you know, blogging about their daily lives and particularly about nature. And I thought, like, Wow, this really like helps to watch these sort of blogs and to you know feel immersed in nature. And even if you're not there physically, you can see, you know, watch these blogs and almost lose yourself in them for ten minutes. And that helped me a lot of the time when I felt so stuck in the house and, and just not able to do anything. You know anything we want to do and it is it's such a shame and everyone thinks you know well it's such a shame because we just moved here we came from berlin we moved here and as soon as we moved here which was um may 2020 
and you know everything was closed down and we couldn't do anything you know but it was quite you know a month later everything started to relax and we we did lots of things but you know I don't know why I just wanted to settle and sort of like get to know Portugal a bit more so I didn't go back to England and then months went by and then I it, the restrictions came back again <clears throat> so yeah now it's, it's reaching a tipping point a boiling point where I can't think of anything else other than like really like when am I going back I can't wait to go back and it and it makes me sad to know that I haven't seen my parents in over a year you know and like, if someone had told me this was gonna happen I would be like how am I gonna deal with this but anyway like I said I need to focus and I and I decided to make these YouTube videos and like it's taken me a quite a long time to do a speaking vlog because I I feel really self-conscious about the sound of my voice on a recording and I've always have ever since I was little. So I'm just gonna get right into it and not delay it and not wait a year down the line. I might as well do it now because, you know, this is me anyway. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna tell you more about myself. So uh, I graduated fashion design in St. Martin's back in 2017. Um, and after that, literally straight after, I wrote, I wrote a book, which took four months or something, and I finished that, and then you know I, and then we pretty much started like traveling after that. So it's been three years since we left London and started traveling and doing all these amazing things. Um, so yeah, I, I love fashion design. I studied that. Uh, and then on the other hand of fashion design, I, I love writing. It's it's probably my earliest sort of interest. Since I was probably like six is, is the age where I started to be interested in writing as a sort of, you know, something that I knew I could do and that I could probably do well, you know. And because I love writing, naturally I like to read and I absolutely, absolutely like to have a ton of books. I collect books. Books is something that have a huge value to me. I think books <laughs> books are almost like friends to me. I I just I think the more you have the more love you have in your life. I don't know how to explain it but I would absolutely buy you know I would rather have books than I don't know diamonds. I don't know it's really weird just having a book and being able to to like lose yourself in in words and sentences just is a way to just turn off turn off from a hectic world and, and all those worries that come with it um yeah and since since the covid happens i've been buying a lot of books and i thought i'd show you some of the ones that i've bought um I've got a few here, but I was I was thinking maybe I'll pick some actually that I've read that I really like, you know, so far. Um, I'll actually I'll show you. I'll show you what I've got right now, what I'm reading right now, um, which anybody who loves great writing, great stories, and amazing characters will have to must love Jane Eyre. And this is an edition I got in Berlin. I just, <laughs> I think anybody who is a romantic would have read this book and been like, damn it, I just want to find a Mr. Rochester because he and just the kind of connection they Okay, I, I absolutely love Gothic storylines. I love Gothic anything. English Gothic is my thing. You know, so I bought this and I'm reading it probably for the fifth time in my life or something. I had a few other editions before this, but they, they're probably at my mum's house. <sighs> yeah, I think also another thing is that I'd love to have a really lovely edition of a book. It can't be a, sh a crappy edition. It has to be a super beautiful edition. It has to be something that I want to hold and look at as if it's like... As if it's an ornament or something you know beyond 
just being a published written book it has to be something you could just leave on the side and it'll look great anyway like exactly as it is um yeah so Jane Eyre that's one um let me just look okay uh okay I'll just show you this I got this delivered today and it's The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd in this absolutely beautiful edition. I can't resist these. I just, I would, I would spend an extra 10, you know, pounds for a better edition. You know, simply because I know that it just adds something to the reading experience. And this is also why I'd never buy a Kindle. I just would absolutely, it wouldn't be the same, you know. So, the, the Living Mountain, something that I've heard about for a, quite a while now because I'm a massive fan of Robert, Robert McFarlane. Um, he's such an amazing nature writer. I can't recommend him enough. He, his work is just... It's a, I like to think of sometimes really good books as like artwork because they're just the words, the way they're put together are just like... It's different, it's special, and it's something which evokes, like, awe? I don't know how to say it, but for me it's like a sort of, like, ah, uh, something awe-inspiring, and just, I feel like the right kind of set of words put together make something magical, <laughs> I don't know. That's why it has to be, like, you know, yeah. So, The Living Mountain, I'll just, I'll read the, the inside. So, The Living Mountain, yeah. <clears throat> um, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Anyway, I'll just read it, okay. In this masterpiece of nature writing, Nan Shepherd describes her journeys in the Cairngorm Mountains of Scotland. There she encounters a world that can be breathtakingly beautiful at times and shockingly harsh at others. Her intense poetic prose explores and records the rocks, rivers, creatures and hidden aspects of this remarkable landscape. Shepherd spent a lifetime in search of essential nature of the Cairngorms. Her quest led her to write this classic meditation on the magnificence of mountains and on our imaginative relationship with the wild world around us. Composed during the Second World War, the manuscript of The Living Mountain lay untouched for more than 30 years before it was finally published. And, you know, you can see by the style of the writing that it's quite, you know, it's not modern, but it comes across as modern considering it was written back, you know, back, I don't know, so many years ago. Um, First published um, in 1977, but you know it was written, composed during the Second World War, so a long time ago. But you know the, the writing is just mesmeric. You know of what I've read here, the, the kind of examples. I haven't read it yet, but absolutely looking forward to it. Um, I'm just gonna actually pick up a few books that I want to show you because they're the ones that I'm reading right now which are the ones that I'm enjoying. Okay so the selfie stick just ran out of battery so I've had to prop it up somehow and hope this works fine anyway. So I brought my books, the ones that I've read I'm reading right now which I really love and I'd like to recommend you guys. Um, along the same lines as Nan Shepherd's uh, The Living Mountain is the Peregrine by J.A. Baker. Um, I bought this last year, or yeah, last year, in the summer, and I read it, and it's just absolutely amazing. Lyrical, just, you know, something unique. I've never read a nature book quite like it. It's quite, it's quite graphic and like, you know, in the way it describes the killing of the, of the prey, but if you really love poetic language and, you know, a good quality, a book that's written amazingly well by some somebody that's very thoughtful in, in the way that he writes, this is a great book, you know. If you just want something to relax 
by, you know, sit in the countryside and read a book. This is quite a good one to choose. Um, I just finished this one. Homo irreal. This is a hard word to pronounce, okay? Irrealis. Irrealis. Homo irrealis by Andre Asiman. Okay, I think that's right. Um, anyway, it's basically a collection of essays. Um, I'll I'll just say the the blurb. The irrealist mood knows no boundaries between what is and what isn't, between what happens and what won't. In more ways than one, the essays of our artists, writers, and great minds gathered in this volume may have nothing to do with who I am or who they were, and my reading of them may be entirely er erroneous, but I misread them the better to read myself. Um, I think most of you know would know this author by his more famous book, Call Me By Your Name, which is and has to be one of the best books I've ever read, and I reread it so many times that my husband is is like what he just doesn't understand why I read it but I just think there's something about it which is actually right here because it's one of my favorite books it's in my sort of favorite pile um it just it just really is the most it just takes young love and puts it into a story and it if you anyone who's been in love, their first love, will, if they read this book, will just be reminded of this, this, the beauty of that first love. It's just special, you know. Next book I bought, Great Gatsby, in this really nice edition. Um, I actually tried to read this book a few years ago, but it was a really, really bad edition, and I think that contributed to, to sort of not finishing it, which is honestly a shame, because when I read it, like, last week, I read it all in two days, and it was like, oh, one of the best books I've read ever. Just the writing style of Scott Fitzgerald is just, like, it's just magical in this book. It's just, it just... You get lost in it, you get lost in the story and it's, it's believable, even though it's kind of far-fetched, but it's sort of believable in, in the term, in the kind of like, in the round, you know, in the in the way that story would be, you know. It just makes you want to go back to the time of like, <laughs> flappers and, you know, jazz and all that kind of funky stuff, you know. Um, next book I'm reading, Anna Karenina. I thought, if I haven't read the classics by the end of this quarantine, then something's gone wrong. <laughs> you know, if I got all this if, all this free time, and if I don't read these books, then I'd be like, what the hell have I been doing? Why didn't I, like, spend the time, you know, I'd love to read, why wouldn't I read the classics? And, you know, I'm halfway through. It's actually surprisingly, like, an easy read. Um, they say this translation is has been done in, in almost like it is a, it sounds, it reads as something really fresh, even though it was written so long ago. The style of the translation is just smooth and like, and simple and just, it's very crystal clear, I don't know. But yeah, I think it's, it's just a, a really absorbing book, something that you'd, just like to spend a good few weeks reading and you sort of come back to like every day and you know it it holds your attention our book on the road by jack kerouac um with this really amazing edition corrugated edges i love it <laughs> it's amazing um bought this a few months ago and I finally got down to reading it. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Just because it it, it talks about this character. Um, let's see. I think, yeah. It's, I think it's called Paradise, but I'm not sure. But anyway, this character goes around with his cool friends and they basically like travel around America, you know, road tripping the whole way. It's 
it just makes you want to go and travel, especially during this time when you can't travel. It was just a great escapist kind of book to read. I actually got a lot out of it. <laughs> and the, the writing style is just really like, it's, it's, it's not trying to be like a, a literary novel. It just is saying it exactly how it is. The kind of quotations they say, they speak exactly how they would have spoke. This all makes it super real, you know, super sort of like unpretentious and readable. And when he starts to get into the descriptions of these, of the places around him and the situations he's in, he has this way of just making, bringing something to life and sparking it with like a, he's, he's able to just like put words together and make it, you know, speak to you. Um, I'm going to show you The Old Ways, which is um, Robert McFarlane. Uh, this book, during the quarantine, is one of the best books to read. It's just, it makes you feel like you're wandering in an amazing wild place and going on amazing adventures with with this guy who clearly has a, is so talented at writing. He's, he's just able to, you know, in the same way as the author of The Peregrine is, he's just able to bring about extra kind of like, like extra flavour to his sentences, you know. He can take simple scenes he sees in nature and just translate it into something which really like pops. I think I've read this book a few times, like three times. You know, it's something I come to when I feel like I need to read something that's non-fiction, something which will make me, you know, feel like calm, like relaxed. There's a, there's no like major plot things happening in it. It's really just basically like, you know, if you want to, you know, read about nature and sort of, yeah, get out, which is perfect for this time. So yeah, the old old ways, and. I'm going to show you Ramble Guides, which is by the author Athena Mella, which I absolutely love. She she encouraged me to start my own YouTube channel and I watch her stuff and just wish I was there with her because, oh my gosh, the scenery she walks around in just reminds me of home and yeah. This book, I've just been waiting for it for weeks and it finally came and I was like, yeah, because it's got pictures and lovely descriptions about, you know, the UK. <laughs> right now I'm absolutely missing the UK and I just want to go back. Yeah, so if you really feel like you need to, yeah, if you want to have a guide to, to the Peak District, Maybe you should get this one, it seems like a very good choice to make. Okay, actually one more thing I'm going to show you for this video, I might as well show you, is, is War and Peace. I got this book along with Anna Karenina because I thought if I don't read this one as well it would be a crime. I'm going to read it and it is an absolute block. Like, if you put these books together, it makes up nearly the same. <laughs> it's just an amazing. Also, I really love these editions, these um, Penguin Classics editions with the black band at the bottom, and they come with these amazing, beautiful um, paintings on the covers, and I just think they're really special books to have on the shelf. Um, I'll give you a sort of shelf tour in, in a future video. I've got quite a lot of books now, and actually quite a lot of books are kept back at my parents' house in England, which I'm going to have to try and get here somehow. Um, yeah. Yeah, just this is my writing desk. Um, this is where I do everything. My special place. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this vlog. Um, I'm going to do more of these kind of style vlogs, these kind of talky vlogs, but 
um, especially now that we can't really go out as much as we'd like to. We, we got a drone and we tested that out, but there's lots of things that you need to like sort of do with it. You need to register for it and all these rules that I didn't really know before. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> yeah, so I hope to see you in another vlog. And yeah, hope you're safe and well through the, yeah, considering it's a terrible coronavirus time. But I think we've passed the worst of it and I'm just hoping that the next few months it'll just it'll just really like you know quickly get back to normal and you know we'll be able to see our family more regularly. Okay, um, yeah. So see you in the in the next vlog. <laughs>